thinking about becoming a school counselor. You popped up at the right place. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to my channel. I'm Shirley, and I'm the content creator for StyleMom.com, which is a blog that focuses on lifestyle, beauty, fashion, and career tips for the busy mom or woman, whoever you may be out there, who just cannot keep up with all the tips, tricks, trends of lifestyle, beauty, fashion, and career. And if that sounds like your kind of vibe, please consider subscribing to my channel. We all would love to have you here. And on today's video, we are going to focus on a career topic of how to become a school counselor. Let's get into it. The reason why I'm making this video is because I posted a video back in 2017 that basically was like, she's a what? And I came out to YouTube that I'm basically a high school counselor on YouTube. And the whole reason why I became somebody on YouTube was because of my high school students. So that's where I started to receive a lot of messages on Instagram, as well as comments on that particular video from so long ago about how to become a school counselor. People were asking, me how long it took people were asking me the salary people were asking me do do you work over the summer do you not work over the summer can you sustain a lifestyle with a school counseling degree as a school counselor as a profession so on today's video I wanted to go through each and every question with you all and hopefully this is going to help some of you out there that's considering getting into school counseling let's go do you need to earn a bachelor's degree in counseling in order to apply for a master's degree program in counseling? The answer to that question is no. You do not need a bachelor's degree in counseling in order to apply for a master's degree program in counseling. All you have to do is have good grades in undergrad. Example, I attended Florida A&M University in Tallahassee, Florida, and I graduated cum laude, meaning I had a 3.0 or higher, and that's basically it. I just needed to have a bachelor's degree with a good GPA in order to apply to the master's program that I attended. So you can major in anything for the first four years while you're an undergrad, while you're making your decision, while you're making your transition. You don't have to major in something specific to counseling. Now, will it help? Yes. But is it necessary? Is it required? Absolutely not. Do you only need a master's degree in school counseling in order to become a school counselor? The answer to that question is no. You actually can attend a master's program that's specific to just counseling. The master program that I attended was at Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and that degree program was called the Master's of Science in School Guidance and Counseling, and I earned that degree from the Center for Psychological Studies. It was very specific at that particular university, and basically, we learned the school guidance portion as well as the counseling aspect. So what they did in that degree program was they melded in everything in one. So we learned the mental health breakdown of counseling as well as the school portion and how we're supposed to guide the children academically, personally, socially. Um, so that's that particular degree program. But you can pick a degree program that's just a master's in science in counseling. You can also pick a degree program that's a master's of science in mental health counseling. However, there's going to be some extra steps that the state may require you to take, and we'll get into that. Do you have to take a grad school entrance exam? It all depends on the university or the college that you're going to attend, whether it's an online college and or university, or if it's the actual campus that you're going to attend. I attended Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida and they did not require us to take a graduate school entrance exam. However, they did require that our GPAs in undergrad were 3.0 or higher and we had to respond to multiple questions from a panel written about why we felt the need for us to go into the profession of school counseling. Now, that's just Nova Southeastern University. I do know of some other universities in the South Florida area that do require the GRE. So an example, Florida International University, FIU, they do require you all to take the GRE, um, but that's a public state university. Nova Southeastern, on the other hand is a private university. So those of us that attended Nova Southeastern University, we paid a pretty penny for our degree. However, I'm not going to lie to you. Those of us that came out of Nova Southeastern, 
we are kind of like the bomb counselors out here in Broward and Dade County and Palm Beach County. So I may be just a bit biased because I'm an alumni. However, um, it just all depends on the college and or university that you're going to apply to. How long does it take to earn your master's degree in counseling and or school counseling? And it depends. It could take anywhere from two to three years and your practicum, clinical, internship, whatever you all want to call it, is embedded into the program. So the first two years, they're going to pound you with the curriculum, the book piece, the ethics piece, the mental health piece, and the mental health piece is big. And when I say the mental health piece is big, especially for those of us in Florida, Broward County in particular, with a lot of the situations that have gone on with some of our students in our county, um, those universities down here in South Florida, they're very big on testing us and educating us on mental health. And I know a lot of universities throughout the nation are very big on that piece. So it's going to take anywhere from two to three years. That third year is basically your practicum year. So for those of us that can literally just not work and do the internship full time, we actually can do that internship for half a school year. Those of us that don't have the luxury of quitting our jobs and we have to work, then you would do your practicum clinical, you would do that half time, meaning you would take the whole entire year and you would do your practicum for one year. So for those students that do their practicum half time, you would actually have a total of three years. Those students that actually can quit their jobs or not have a job and do their practicum full time, they'll have a half a year. So it all depends. So that's why I say two to three years. For some, it's going to be two and a half years. For others, it's going to be three years. Do you have to take a state exam? The answer is yes. You have to take a state exam in order to become a state certified school counselor in whatever state that you live in. At Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, that actually was our exit exam. In order for us to apply for graduation, we actually had to already take and pass our state board exam in order for us to graduate. So once we passed the Center for Psychological Studies final exam, we also had to go and sign up, register, for the state exam with the Florida Department of Education, we had to sit at a Pearson regulated um, testing center and we had to take that test and pass it and show proof in order for us to apply for graduation. So the answer to that is yes. How do you apply for your official certification? It's going to be specific to everybody's state. So I'm just going to give you the example of Florida. In the state of Florida, I can go in and I can go into the fldoe.org and I can submit an application and pay whatever fees that I need to pay. Along with me submitting whatever application I need to submit online and paying the fee that I need to pay, I have to go to the university that I've earned my master's degree from and I have to send it to the Florida Department of Education in Tallahassee electronically for the university and the Florida Department of Education they will take care of all of that. Once they've reviewed my application as well as my transcript, then they'll send me a statement of eligibility. And on that statement of eligibility, it basically gives me access and the power to go to a school, elementary, middle, or high school, public, private, or charter with that statement of eligibility. And once I'm hired by a school as a school counselor, the school will send all of my information to the Florida Department of Education and then the Florida Department of Education will send me a temporary teaching certificate that will say Shirley and on there it will say school guidance and counseling grades K through 12. Once I receive that, I'm good to go for working, but that temporary certificate only lasts you three years and you're going to have to meet certain requirements. Those requirements are you're going to have to make sure that you would have passed any and every state exam that the state of Florida or the state that you live in requires. Example, in the state of Florida, not only do you have to pass the subject area examination and school guidance and counseling, which my university, they required us to take and pass before we could apply for graduation, but you're also going to have to take and pass the general knowledge test as well as the professional knowledge test. The general knowledge test is a test that tests
assess you on your reading, your English, your math skills, I believe your science skills, as well as your social studies. The professional exam is going to test you on your professionalism and if you know all of the rules and regulations and practices and principles of being an educator in the state of Florida. You have three years in the state of Florida to fulfill all of that and once you fulfill all of that, then the state of Florida will issue you at the end of your three-year temporary cert certification. They will issue your professional certification that lasts you five years and you can work for five years, honey, and then you just have to reapply every five years. I, yeah, that's what you have to do. <laughs> do you have to teach first before becoming a school counselor? Again, that depends on the state in which you live in. There are certain states, I believe, like Texas, that requires you to be a teacher for at least two years in order for you to transition into becoming a school counselor. In the state of Florida, back in the day, it used to be that way. However, I wasn't a teacher when I transitioned into being a school counselor. I was on the payroll as a teacher with my job titles. So I was a behavior specialist and an ESC support facilitator before I became a school counselor. And because they had me on the roster under the teacher pay, that was the way I guess I fulfilled the requirement. However, I think now as time has progressed, it's not like that anymore. So there's a lot of people out there that have no professional background in education. They're going out and they're getting their master's degree in school counseling or counseling, and they're doing their practicums and everything in school settings. And a lot of those people, now the new generation school counselors, those of you watching this video, your internship or your practicum supervisor actually can be that source of referral for you, being that you're gonna do it in a school setting. So back in the day, Yes, in Florida, you would have to be a teacher for at least a year or two, but it's not like that anymore. But I know in other states, you are required to be a teacher in those states for at least two years before you can, before you can transition into being a school counselor. So check with your state. Which age group is better to be a school counselor for? It depends on you. For me, I could never be a elementary or middle school counselor because it just takes it takes a certain amount it takes a certain kind of person, you know what I'm saying? It takes a certain kind of person to be an elementary counselor. Those people are special people. Their emotions are just a little bit different. The way that those little people like to love on people, listen, it, it, it's just different. Middle school is a little intense for me because the children are chemically imbalanced in my opinion. Um in middle school, the children don't know if they still want to be babies from when they were in elementary school or if they want to be grown because they're getting ready to go to high school. So I stay away from middle school. However, I am a high school counselor and I love it. I, did you see the ugly face I made? I, listen, when people ask me, I am literally like, if you are strong, if you know what you're talking about, and if kids can tell that you're just a genuinely good person, especially high school kids, you are going to be an amazing high school counselor. I love the football aspect. I love the sports aspect. I love getting kids to college. I love getting kids to vocational school. I love the kids that compete for the top 10%. Every year since I've been a counselor, I've always been able to predict the valedictorians and the salutatorians, and I've always been able to predict the kids that are going to be like the upset, like the kids that you didn't see coming, but they came and they ended up being number one or number two. I love, it's my stuff. It's strategy. And that's the whole thing about high school counseling. You have to be a good strategist in order to help people's kids. Every kid is not on the same path. You have your kids that are going to go to colleges and universities, and then you have your kids that just want to go to vocational school. You have your kids that just want to be a police officer. You have a kid that just wants to be a dental assistant. Listen, I don't knock them because some of them going to make more money than me. <laughs> so I support them and I show them the route in which to go that's best for them. And like I said, it's all about strategy. So that's why I love being a high school counselor. And when it's time for me to support them emotionally, I know how to support them emotionally because I've been in the shoe in their shoes before and I know exactly what to say to make them feel a little bit better and a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more confident. So that's why I love being a high school counselor. But really and truly, it all
all depends on you. And if anybody watching this video is an elementary or middle school counselor, or if you're interested in elementary or middle school, comment in the comment section down below. Why are you interested in elementary and or middle school? And do you think that I probably would be able to change in the near future? Like I would actually transition to one of the two? Comment in the comment section down below. Tell me what you think, <laughs> okay? Is the salary enough to live comfortably on? And the answer to that question is it depends on the state that you live in. In the state of Florida, we historically do not get paid enough as educators, period. Period. Point blank, period. And we working hard out here in the state of Florida to try to get these kids to make learning gains past all of these tests that these imaginary people that probably ain't never sit in no classroom before. I'm digressing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's, that, that's the educator in me. That's the counselor in me. We're going to rein it back, Shirley. We're going to rein it back. We're going to bring it back in. But yes, so it just depends. As an example, in the state of Florida, school counselors, like I said, they are on the roster for teacher pay. However, in Broward County, we do get a supplement because we have master's degrees. So I believe that supplement is anywhere from an extra $1,000 to $3,000. I'll link all of that information in the description box down below. So if your base pay, let's say, is $41,000, that's an example. If you have a master's degree, the supplement possibly could be an additional $2,000. So instead of making $41,000 as a regular teacher with just a bachelor's degree, if you have a master's degree in counseling or school counseling, you will walk out with $43,000. That's just an example. I'm giving y'all an example. Um, of how it works in our county, specifically Broward County. Um, for those of us that's in Florida, is that enough to live? If you live in Miami, Broward County, or Palm Beach County, um, $40,000 is not enough if you are not single and if you have children. Um, it's not enough. I'm just going to be very honest with you. I am very blessed that I, my husband also works. So we have a double income house as well as I do not set my paycheck to just get paid for 10 months. Absolutely not. I set my paychecks for me to get paid 12 months out the year so that I can pay my bills and still not have to go get a summer job because a lot of educators, teachers especially, they have to go out and get summer jobs or they have to do like summer night school at local schools in Miami-Dade, Broward, or Palm Beach County. And your girl is not doing that because your girl has a blog that she has to get ready to launch. Also, because I do do blogging, I do have commitments with brands that I have to either shoot videos or I have to shoot content for Instagram for. So your girl is not going to go get no part-time job where she got a clock in, period. So I thank, thank you, Lord, that me and my husband, thank you, Lord, are able to survive with his income as well as my income. If you're a single person out here in South Florida and you're a school counselor, you have no kids, you have no real big financial commitment or debt, yes, you can survive out here. You ain't living in the lap of luxury, but you can survive. If I was a counselor in, let's say, Georgia, let's say if I was a counselor in Atlanta, Georgia, I would be living pretty nice because y'all know the cost of living in Atlanta, Georgia is not that high as compared to down here in South Florida. So if I was over there, I'd be making more money over there in Georgia and my cost of living would be low. But because I'm down here in South Florida, which I love South Florida, um, I have to do other things like blogging, shooting content in order for me to kind of balance out all of my pay. But like I said, I don't set my paycheck for only 10 months. I set my paycheck for a total of 12 months just so that I don't have to go out and get a part-time job or a second job over the summer. Hope that helps. Are there any professional organizations I should join? While I was attending Nova Southeastern University, it was a requirement that our graduating cohort actually was a part of the Florida School Counselor Association as well as the American School Counseling Association. It, we, it was not an option. Like we all had to be members of it. We all had to attend um, trainings if trainings came down to South Florida or we had to do webinars. When I got hired by one of my high schools, the guidance director actually, she asked our principal 
if they could cover our professional school counseling association membership fees and they did so if you have a if you have a guidance director that you'll work under or you have a principal or an assistant principal that believes in the school counseling department they depend on us y'all they sure do then you should ask them if they would not have an issue with um paying for your professional membership in one of the school counseling associations. I think it's very important till today. I'm still a member of the Florida School Counseling Association as well as the American School Counseling Association. And the American School Counseling Association, they actually are the ones that set up like the ASCA model for how we're supposed to be as school counselors from the mental health aspect of children to the trying to make sure that we know all the rules and regulations of what we're supposed to do. So yes, very important that you all join a school counseling association that's specific to your state as well as the American School Counseling Association. They always send so much great information. I'll link their uh, information in the description box down below. Woo! So I think that is like the nuts and the bolts of um, how to become a school counselor. If you have any other questions for me, please feel free to leave it down in the description box down below and I'll be more than welcome to either answer your questions in the comment section or I'll make another video kind of expounding on something specifically that you're interested in. Um, I think I'm going to do a series and make this a playlist so that you guys can kind of get this general information as well as me giving you all some information per topic that pertains to school counseling so yeah i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you did enjoy this video please feel free to give me a like subscribe to this channel also share this video so that a lot of other people out there who may be interested or considering becoming school counselors can get this information i hope that it was helpful enough for you all to share i would greatly appreciate it and somebody in your life that wants to be a school counselor would greatly appreciate it as well. And please go on to my description box down below. You'll be able to find the links to all of my socials. Follow your girl on Instagram to be inspired and motivated, honey, because we all can do this thing, honey. We can be beautiful. We can be about lifestyle, career, fashion, and beauty, honey. And nobody can't tell us any different, okay? <laughs> And I want you all to remember that you all are awesome, wonderful, amazing, beautiful people running around out here. Don't let anybody tell you any different. And I'll catch you guys on my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah. Peace.